الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Yesterday we spoke about and we went through the chapter of du'as <coughs> as Mufti Sahib has brought about in the next chapter um, a link with the previous one that prophetic du'as so one is to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and something that we slightly touched on yesterday is that du'as that the Prophet sallallahu has taught us and the number one importance of learning them and number two the benefit of utilizing them so although one should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all one's needs the leader of both the worlds sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us some specific duas for different occasions during the day and night for example upon waking up before entering and after leaving the bathroom, on performing wudu, on entering and leaving the mosque, on entering the house before and after eating, after hearing the adhan, when dressing, when looking in the mirror, and before going to sleep, etc. In short, he taught us different du'as for each occasion, and which are exceptionally comprehensive and beneficial for all our religious and worldly needs. In reality, if we were to spend a whole lifetime thinking, we would not be able to make du'as like the leader of both the worlds has taught us. One speciality that's been given to the Prophet ﷺ, which he mentions that, Utitu Jawami al Kalim, that I've been given comprehensive speech. Meaning, the Prophet, ﷺ, if you look through the books of hadith, very seldom will you find from the Prophet ﷺ lengthy sermons. His advice to people was very comprehensive, short, simple, but volume, literally volumes in meaning. And the Prophet ﷺ brought that down to a special gift that was bestowed upon him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when the Prophet ﷺ spoke, the words that came out of the Prophet's mouth were divinely inspired. So in very, very short sentences, very, very small gatherings, the Prophet ﷺ would impart mountains of knowledge and give that type of advice that was extremely, extremely beneficial. And one of this, if you notice that on these occasions that we're speaking about, like going, entering the house, leaving the house, going into the masjid, all, the Prophet has not taught us lengthy du'as. They're very, very, very short. Going to sleep, there's not a 10 minute du'a that you read before you go to sleep. Allahumma bismika mutuwahiya. Literally four words. When you wake up in the morning, even though you're grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you sleep and you've you know, slept well and you're grateful for waking up in the morning, there's not a half an hour dua that you have to go through. And like that, where the Prophet has taught us duas, very short. And so the reality is that those short comprehensive duas, even if we were to put together a, a list uh, of sentences that we want to thank Allah for before I go to sleep, those, it could be 10 pages long, they will not have the impact of those four words that the Prophet told, taught us. That's the reality. And that's why it's important to learn prophetic du'as. That where the Prophet in whatever instances he's taught us something, learn those du'as because they're more beneficial than any other du'a that we can make at that time. Because if there was anything better that could have been said, who would have said it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that's why you find collections of books or collections of du'as in books that have been penned by Salaf, the Salaf al-Salihin. Imam Nawawi rahimahullah has a book, Al-Adhkar, which he's collected literally all the du'as that he could gather on different, different occasions in a person's life and he put them into one place. Ibn Sunni has written a book, Kitab Amal al-Layli wal-Yawma, Amal al-Yawm wal-Layla, that the, the, the du'as of the day and the night and so on and so forth. So, get a hold of these books and because they're so short it only takes a few days maybe you might have to read it for a couple of days three days four days and then because they're so short and comprehensive you it becomes natural you start you you don't need to look inside anything to read it many of us we've gone through the system of uh, evening madrasas where we taught we were taught du'as when we were young after learning those du'as when we were young 
as long as they were habitual in our lives, we've never had to go back to revise those du'as. That when I sit down to eat, I have to go back to my du'a book to look at, we know, Bismillah, Allahumma, uh, you know, uh, Bismillah, wa barakatillah, Bismillah, the different variations that there are. So it's just a matter of making it a habit. And similarly, this habit should be instilled in our children. Very, very important. That they are reminded that the Prophet ﷺ has taught us to remember Allah at literally every turn. And he's made that very simple by short three, four, five word sentences in which we are gaining multiple rules. One is to make the dua and because it's a prophetic dua, there's more emphasis on its acceptance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These du'as are not time-consuming or effortful, nor are wudu or raising the hands required for them. So there's no formalities behind these du'as. It's simply making the du'a and moving forward. If one were to memorize these du'as with a little effort, one would secure immense benefits in both worlds, and good deeds will continue to accrue in one's record with great ease. Hence, every Muslim should memorize these du'as. There are many books in which these du'as have been reported. One such of Hazrat Hakim al Ummat Mulana Shafari Tanri, Munajatul Makbul, comprises many of these du'as. One should memorize them and also make one's children memorize them and habitually read them from childhood. Inshallah, one will also earn reward when these du'as are read. The second portion of this, moving away from prophetic du'as, is there is specific mention in respect of du'a for others in hadith. And it's something I touched on a few days ago in the after Asr Dars, that just as one should make du'a for one's own, own needs, it is an act of great virtue to also make du'a for one's relatives, friends, and Muslims in general. And there's a benefit to that. It is stated in a hadith that when a Muslim makes du'a for his brother in his absence, the brother here is not a literal brother, a Muslim brother, makes du'a for his brother in his absence, an angel makes du'a that he also receives the same. So when you make du'a for somebody else in their absence, Allah grant them prosperity, Allah grant them jannah, Allah grant them forgiveness, a du'a is then made by an angel for you, that the angel says to Allah, Allah grant him the same that he's asking for his absent brother. So the added benefit of making du'a for others is that the angel makes that same du'a for you. Therefore, if you know of any, Mus- a, any Muslim in difficulty or worry, make du'a for them. In fact, one should make du'a for those who are not Muslim as well. Yes, by asking Allah to give them the greatest gift that Allah could give them, the guidance to Islam. That make du'a that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide people, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, people that you know. It is a great habit because that shows that you're concerned for them. That shows that you really care about them. There's nothing, there's no greater care than you, that you can have for somebody than their salvation in the hereafter. There's nothing greater that, that, that you could want for them. That you're making du'a that Allah, this person that I know, give them Jannah. That is, give them uh, Islam, guide them to Islam so that they end up in Jannah. There's nothing greater that you can ask for them. In this way, one will earn the reward of du'a alongside the virtue of wishing well for others. That's uh, some uh, putting together both elements of the du'a. Uh, number one, making du'a in general and making it a habit to make du'a whenever we need something or being grateful at times, but just having the habit of making du'a. Number two, learning prophetic du'as, learning the du'as, the daily du'as of our lives as the Prophet ﷺ taught them to us. And number three, making a habit to make du'a for other people. Because in that, inshallah, there is an added benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, through the du'a of the angel for you, Allah will grant you similar uh, that you have asked for others. Allah grant us all the tawfiq, inshallah. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah, bihamdi, wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant, nasafi wa